Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. This is Matt Reynolds. You guys know me. And this is actually the intro. I wanted to talk just for a second about what you're about to hear. This is the intro for the Take Charge with 10 series that I recorded with my family, with my wife and my two daughters. And so we took part in the Take Charge with 10 challenge a few weeks ago to beta test the system itself. And we decided to, let's see, it's called a blog if you write it. It's called a vlog if you video it. I don't know what it's called, an audio log. I don't know, that's what we did. So at the end of every night, we talked about the challenge for the day. So from day one where we wanted to increase our water intake, day two, reducing our sugars, we talked about that and what the challenges were like and where we found wins and maybe where we struggled talked about stopping mindless snacking on day three, day four, and keeping a food journal and the steps we made there. My wife and I decided to track using my fitness pal. The big one that I was worried about, day five, eliminating alcohol consumption and my story there. Eating our veggies on day six, increasing fiber on day seven, cutting out caffeine consumption in the evenings on day eight, making sure we were eating balanced meals, protein, fat, carbs, fiber, on day nine and then prepping everything at home day 10. And so you get to look in to see what it's like being a member of the Reynolds family. And so I just had a blast doing this challenge with my family. I cannot recommend it enough. It is for everyone. If you haven't listened to the prequel episode, it's called the Take Charge 10 episode that came out Friday a few days ago with Jillian Ward and Nikki Sims and myself. You should listen to that. It's sort of a prep an overview of the system itself, of the challenge itself. And then again, this should be a lot of fun. At the end of the day, my family and I just recorded a few minutes talking about what it was like for us each day. And so I hope you get to uh, do this with us. I certainly wouldn't say suffer along. It was a blast. I never felt like I was on a diet. I never felt hungry. I never felt like I was deprived. And honestly, it was just a lot of fun doing it with my family. So I can't recommend it enough for you, your family, your community. I hope you take part in the Take Charge with 10 Nutrition Challenge. If you don't know what I'm talking about yet, or this is the first time you've heard, you can go to the website, barbellogic.com slash take charge. Or if you just go to barbellogic.com, you'll see the link there. You can sign up. This is a free 10-day challenge. Anybody can do it. Clients of block, people who are not clients of block, kids, seniors, people who already have nutrition coaches, anybody can do this challenge. And it's just really setting foundational habits that would be awfully hard to argue against as being healthy things to do. So you can feel good about your kids doing it as well as yourself. It's not a diet. It's not a restrictive thing. And uh, so I hope that you'll be able to follow along with us so that when you're doing day one, you're hearing us talk about day one. When you're doing day two, you're hearing us talk about day two and hear and maybe be able to empathize and relate to some of the things that we were challenged by. So I hope you enjoy the series that will come out over the next few days and good luck on the Take Charge with 10 Nutrition Challenge. You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm here with actually my family. Welcome to the show. I'm here with Rachel Reynolds and here with Kaylin. Hi. Hello. And here in a future little piece of this episode, you'll also meet my youngest, Kinsley. So we are doing the 10-day nutrition challenge. Jillian, you know, she challenged us to do this. And so we're trying to do it as a family. And this is really, uh, I went to you guys and you guys said you want to do this with me and be part of it. And so there is a new thing that we do every single day. So in the 10-day challenge, day one for us, this is the end of day one, is to drink half of your body weight in ounces in water. Now, that just works if you use pounds, right? So if, for those of you listening from the UK that measure in kilograms or stone or something weird, then this isn't going to work. So for a 200-pound person, they would drink 100 ounces of water, right? That's the idea. And then you're going to continue that every single day for the all 10 days, actually. And then tomorrow, I think it's uh, we're cutting out extra sugar. So we'll talk about that after day two. So day one, 
I can talk about how much I drank. I'm not going to ask you guys how much you weighed. I appreciate but, that. <laughs> but how did it go drinking all this water? It was easy. It was really easy. So I have a hydro flask that tells me the ounces. And so, you know, that would help me keep track of all the ounces that I need to drink. Right. You basically drink three hydro flasks. Well, they don't know how much. It could be a 10-ounce Hydro Flask, baby. Maybe That's it was only true. 30 ounces. <laughs> they don't know how much it was. <laughs> Y'all so, don't be doing any math out I, there. I got the stink eye. <laughs> it's a, it's but you drink scary. three Hydro Flasks. I just burned a hole through this mic. What, <laughs> and so, not that hard. You don't drink that much normally. I really don't. I've always been that way. So, it surprises me that you said it was easy. I will eat an entire meal and then take a drink at the end. Right. Yeah, I'm not the kind of person to like... Eat and drink, eat and drink, eat and drink. Right. I just eat my little portions <laughs> and then I drink. So your strategy was just to basically 100% of anything you drink today, you drink from the hydro flask and it was just pure water. Correct. You didn't put anything in it. You didn't flavor it. Nothing. I had the little like crystal light packet. Okay. You put a crystal light packet in. Yeah. Okay. Which is okay. sugar free. So. And then Kaylin, how about you? I'd say it was pretty easy for me because I drink a lot of water as is. And so it was pretty simple to just fill up my hydro flask throughout the day and same just thing. drink it. Yeah. So our girls all have hydro flask. Kinsley did the same. She drank her hydro flask too. I'm the only one that didn't use hydro flask. The funny thing <laughs> is, is that I naturally drink tons of fluid every day. I always yeah. have. My mom tells stories about when I was a little kid, I've always sweat a lot. I always drink a ton. I'll drink five or six glasses of whatever it is that I'm drinking at dinner. I actually have always struggled with actually eating a lot of food at one sitting, I think because I drink so much volume. Right, especially like at a restaurant, when, what do they do? They bring you your drink first and you suck that down and they come back out, <laughs> oh, right. let me get you another one. Let me get you another one. And so by the time you actually get your food at a restaurant. You're half full from the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, your water yeah, loss. You still manage to eat like even our food, so. Right. <laughs> Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> so, yes, we ate pretty clean today. We had Indian food for dinner, which was a little higher calorie dinner for us. And I mopped up the seconds. I made sure that uh, we didn't throw away any food because I was raised in the Depression era where we don't throw away food. Depression <laughs> let me, era. <laughs> let me tell you. So here's the strategy that I've been using lately. and I actually love it. It's not really a strategy to get me to drink more because I tend to drink a lot anyway. But I really like this. So when we went to Boston for New Year's to go visit Chris, you guys know Chris, as you've heard him on the Principles Podcast, we visited him and they had something called an ARK, A-A-R-K, which is similar to a soda stream. So it carbonates water at your house. And they had this and I loved it. I would take this carbonated water, I'd put it on ice and a pint glass and I'd squeeze a wedge of lime or lemon over it. And I loved it. And so as a matter of fact, I think while we were in Boston, we ordered it on Amazon, came home and was here. And I have just hammered water. So an ARC water bottle, you fill up the water bottle. We've got purified water. We've got, you know, a purifier on our sink. I fill it up. It's a little, oh, just over a liter of water. I fill it up and then I hit it with a bunch of CO2. I just drink carbonated water. So I start every morning. I drink about a full liter. I drink one of those full bottles, which is, you know, I think it's about three pint glasses worth while I'm drinking my espresso, while I'm drinking my coffee. And so by the time I've ever put food in my mouth, I've already had a liter of water and a couple coffees usually. And so that's what I did. And I did kind of the same thing you did. I just... All before we are even awake. Before you're awake, I'd had a liter of water. <laughs> Crazy. And so I drank about three liters of water, of bubbly water, of homemade bubbly water. And then I had a couple bottles of water, which I also tend to drink a fair amount of bottled water. And I had one LaCroix. And so hammered my water, not too bad, right? So now it's just an issue of being consistent with it over the next 10 days. So first day, not too bad. I'm sure it's a reason why Jillian does it. It's not too hard. You don't have to change anything about your diet. You just have to focus on water. And I think what it's doing a lot of times is if you drink a lot of calorie drinks, right. it kind of naturally pulls those out because you go, well, you know, I can't drink tea. I can't drink sweet tea. I'm not going to drink soda. I'm not going to drink Gatorade. I'm not going to drink whatever right. because I have to have this much water and you don't want to drink anything else if you've got to drink that much water. So pretty right. good start. Which yeah. we aren't soda drinkers. No. Yeah. And we don't drink things with the calories in it for the most part. We never have soda in the house. Except for someone sitting to my right currently that really loves sweet tea. That's right. So that's <laughs> yeah. kind of hard. Whoa. <laughs> I didn't know we were pointing fingers now. <laughs> Yes. So good start, everybody. Everybody hit their goal for day one. 
and we will talk again here in just a second and we'll do a day two roundup so we'll see you tomorrow All right, welcome to day two. This is the end of day two. This is actually, I think I can speak for the family. This is a little tougher today. So day two rule is no more than 50 grams of added sugar in your diet, not just today, but for the next today and then eight more days after this. Now, I thought going into this rule that this one was going to be an easy one for me because as you know, I don't really like sweets that much. No. I could go the rest of my life and not eat sweets. You don't crave them like I do. You crave them. I thought, this one's going to be a struggle for mama, <laughs> right? Now, somewhere down the line, I think day six or something, there's like, we have to cut out alcohol. Probably not going to be as big of a deal for the kids. Oh, let's hope so. For me, that one's going to be a struggle to go like five days in a row with no alcohol or what, whatever it is. Okay, so here is the challenge. By the way, Kinsley, welcome to the show. Kinsley's on the show Hi. today. So Kinsley is our 10-year-old, and she also has been hammering her water out of her hydro flasks and tried to cut the extra sugar. Again, this is just something we're doing as a family for fun. This isn't, I want to be clear, you know, we're not trying to push diets on our kids. Really, this is a thing that we're all being able to do together as a family to just be able to develop some healthy eating habits. It's a good thing for us to do as a family. And it's also nice if a couple of us are stuck drinking, you know, a gallon of water a day, watching somebody else hammer Dr. Pepper or beer or anything else isn't very fun. Kinsley loves beer. And so I always said, Kinsley, let's try to focus what on the water. What kind of beer do you like, let's Kinsley? Watch- um, let's see. I don't know. Okay. It, all of them, you know? Yes. So, no. So, Kinsley's been drinking her water. Butter beer. There you go. Butter beer. That's my girl. Today, we had to reduce our sugars below 50 grams, which normally I don't think that would be a big deal, except today no. was Kaylin's 16th birthday party. You guys heard from her yesterday. And she threw a skating party at an old school 1980s skating rink, 80s party. We all dressed up in 80s. As a matter of fact, probably they'll use a picture that we took today for the thumbnail for this podcast. And so the only thing that you can eat at the skating party is they order pizza at the skating party. So it's pizza. And there's not a ton of sugar added to the pizza, although my guess is that there's a, some sugar added to the sauce on the pizza. And then well before we decided to take on this challenge, you had hired a professional baker. We didn't go to the grocery store and get a cake. Legit, we got yeah. a yeah. legit beautiful cake three and cake tiered, pops. Yeah, yeah three-tiered was... cake. And cake pops, which were not like the little round cake pops. They, they were, were like the size of <laughs> an eclair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, cake pops. <laughs> They're cake sickles. Yes. So think of a popsicle and what those sizes look like, and that's yes. what they were. My guess is that looking at the calendar today may end up being, the, certainly I think it'll be the hardest day to cut out the sugars. So the first day that we had to do it is probably the hardest day. And so for well, me, especially with the party, right? Because of the party, because of the party. And so I was very careful today to eat absolutely no added sugar whatsoever until I got to the party. So I knew that it was coming. And again, I think I kept mine under 50 grams. Also, they made you choose two drinks when you got to the, so they had a plethora of fountain drinks. You can choose two drinks. You know, we had 35 kids there. And Kaylin said, I want to do root beer and Sprite. So no, no diet sugar soda. And they had sugar. Wa- yeah. And they had water in a pitcher. So I drank my water in a pitcher, continued to drink my, you know, my lots and lots of water, my gallon plus of water for me. And that wasn't too difficult. I took two bites of cake pop is what I had. Two healthy bites of cake pop. But that's all I had. And I had, you know, I had a few pieces of pizza. They were kind of smaller pieces of pizza too. So, I, you know, I certainly didn't eat great for dinner but ate really well during the day. So how did it go for you guys? About the same. I did have a little bit of root beer, (laughs) possibly some bites of cake, (laughs) and the other half of your cake pop. (laughs) Two-thirds of my cake pop. Yeah. I took one bite of your cake pop, Kinsley, and Uh I took one bite of mom's cake pop. Mm. So you got two-thirds of cake pop. I had two bites. No, 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 no. You're way off. <laughs> so you're probably a little over today on the 50 grams. Probably so, but for the rest of the day, I did not have any added sugar right. whatsoever. Right. So and same thing for, for you, KK. lunch, for breakfast, I made sure that nothing. Yeah. You ate pretty healthy throughout the day. Yeah. I had half a cake pop and not even a single bite of cake. It was right. just little. Right. And half you had about a root beer. Yeah, half a root beer. Yep. And then the rest of the day, no sugars, no candy. Nothing like that the rest of the day. So, okay. So tomorrow probably be a little easier, a little easier for us to do this when we're eating at home and we're not stuck at a skating rink. Did you burn (laughs) off all the calories by skating? 
Yep. Oh, that, oh, listen, that's actually a pretty good point. Yeah. So for you especially, I was giving you a little bit of a hard time. You definitely had more sugar than me today, but we had a very hard workout this morning. We, we, we squatted <laughs> and deadlifted, and then we went out and we did crazy circuits in the garage where we did glute ham raise, reverse hyper, we did leg extensions, and we did the echo bike. I went nuts on it. And you were struggling to walk most of the day, and then we got to the skating rink, and you laced up the skates, and you skated for two hours straight. I did. So that mm -hmm. is probably true. I'm sure more than erased the extra 25 grams of sugar that That's you right. had above me. <laughs> and I played I played the little hostess mom at the, you at did. the party, picking up plates and, it was cute. and filling up people's drinks. So that was fun. So that was day two. So water's pretty good where we're at right now because we've been gone. It's, uh, let's see, what time is it right now? It's about nine o'clock at night. We've been gone for about four and a half hours at this point. So we're probably a little behind on water. I know all of us right now are sitting here drinking our water. I've got my bubbly water here. I can see you all have the hydro flasks and we're hammering it. And so, you know, day two is a struggle, but we wanted to be honest about it. And water went well. Yep. Sugar went okay right up until the birthday party. And I think <laughs> we did pretty well for a birthday party. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. The, if the temptation were not there and, you know, we don't want to deprive ourselves of enjoying that. Yes. So, but yes, in moderation for sure. So tomorrow is we're cutting out snacking. So no mindless snacking. We've got to just eat when uh, our meals are planned. So we'll I talk know about two that. people that are really bad snackers in this family. <laughs> yeah, and it's I not you or me. It. No, I it's can't not do it. It's the other two. So the other two, we're going to raid the. We're, we're going to find their, out about someone's snack drawer. Well, I was going to say we're going to raid their dressers tomorrow, <laughs> and we found there's Halloween candy still stuffed in there. So oh, yeah. we'll come Stay back bad. tomorrow and we'll talk about how we did on snacking. Thanks for listening, and thanks for enduring. Hopefully. You've been able to pick up the 10-day challenge as well. Maybe you're a day or two behind us as you listen to this now. And hopefully this will give you a little bit of just somebody to sympathize with, to know that we went through it first. So again, you've, you're you probably doing this. We are this. real people. Real people <laughs> struggling with it just like everybody else. But I feel really good, actually. I, I feel, do. I feel really good. I feel yes. great and, doing it. In conjunction with training, especially. Yes. Agreed. So again, thanks for listening. And we'll pick up the log tomorrow. See you then. Bye. All right, 10-day nutrition challenge, day three is where we're at. Just completed day three. Day three is stop mindless snacking. So for the remaining eight days, we're only going to eat at mealtime and, and a designated snack time. I'll note that it says, and a designated snack time, which feels like that means singular. <laughs> <laughs> and so how did it go for you today? So I am by nature not a snacker whatsoever. I'm really good about eating only during meal times. I do get a little hungry in the afternoons and sometimes I might have cottage cheese, but I don't grab chips. I don't grab right. snacky type stuff. I might drink a protein shake or something, but typically I'm just not a snacker at all. So how about you? I am not much of a snacker either, except for at night a little bit more than you. And that snack is usually liquid and contains alcohol in it. <laughs> <laughs> may or may not be full of alcohol. I didn't do that yesterday. So the interesting thing about this is that Jillian responded to my nutrition inputs from today and said, you only ate at breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And I haven't responded back yet. But so an interesting thing I'm noticing about the 10-day challenge here is that whatever the rule is for the day, you'll tend to sometimes swing the pendulum almost significantly more than what you would normally do. So normally I might have a snack, a lot of times a snack. For me, if I'm doing well, I might drink a protein shake would be a snack. Usually that would be between lunch and dinner. Occasionally it's, you know, post-workout between breakfast and lunch. I didn't have either today. I just had breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It wasn't difficult at all. So again, not a big snacker other than sometimes if we eat early dinner, I'll get hungry before I go to bed. And what snack would you choose to eat then? Nuts and cheese, Not high fat Peanut foods. butter toast. Peanut but well, peanut butter toast. <laughs> occasionally, I have cravings for after I'm already in bed, mm -hmm. naked, contacts out. Yep. Potentially have already slept for fifteen or twenty minutes, and then wake <laughs> up and go. Peanut butter toast sounds like the greatest thing I could ever have right now, and a giant glass of milk or a bowl of cereal. Yeah, but that's really rare. That's I mean, honestly, true. how often do I eat a bowl of cereal? Not very often. Once a month, maybe. I notice that when we're training super hard, 
Yes. I feel like I can't get enough to yeah, eat. Yeah, we're ravenous. So, yeah, so that tends to happen more in the bedtime. Yes. I will say too, from a strategy standpoint for us, we are the kind of people who tend to eat a pretty light breakfast, a pretty light lunch, and then we tend to hammer it for dinner. And so tonight we had Korean barbecue. We have a great Korean barbecue place where you, you know, they bring you all the meat to the table. They have all these sides. There's kimchi and rice and corn, which I don't think we had any rice, right? They brought the rice and no rice. So, you know, we had corn and kimchi and veggies. And then they have these little like vegetable pancake things that we end up cooking on the grill. I'm not sure if we're supposed to cook it on the grill or not, but it's really good when you crisp them up. Otherwise, they're cold and floppy. And yeah, they're just yeah. not good. And then we eat copious amounts of meat. So girls are here as well. Kaylin, how did your, so you had your meals. How did no mindless snacking go so for you today? Just to preface this, our girls are notorious snackers. Massive snackers. <laughs> like, you know, our oldest has a five no. drawer <laughs> <laughs> dresser and one of her drawers is completely full, full chips candy our housekeeper a few months ago and actually frequently our housekeeper will come up to me and she'll be like did you know that the third drawer down of kaylin's dresser is nothing but candy and chips <laughs> and i'll go and look and it'll be like not like a little candy. It'll be like one of those like forty-seven dollar bags Halloween from Sam's bag. of Hall of nothing but Kit Kats. <laughs> there are three hundred fifty Kit Kats in Kaylin's yep. in, in Kaylin's drawer, and uh, and two <laughs> bags of dill pickle chips in the drawer. So and how did that go for you today? Both of you guys and Kaylin's got the mic right now. Kinsley's here as well. Both of them are notorious for snacking so much that they then won't actually eat their meals sometimes. And we don't know this. So by the way, we do not support that in this house. We're not even sure where they get the snacks. We don't hardly buy snacks. We don't, they're very little in our well, house. Well, we do find out when we go, where's that brand new bag of chips yeah, we that's just right. bought? Occasionally we'll do like a soup and sandwich day on a real cold, snowy day. And we'll be like, you know what's good with soup and sandwich? Kettle chips. Mm. And we never buy kettle chips otherwise. And then we go out of the kettle chips and we're like, where are those? They're in Kaylin's third drawer down of her dresser. So... How did you do with snacking today? So, okay. So today I did have a designated snack time. I ate a pretty small lunch today, so I kind of got hungry around 2.30. What did you have for lunch? You said a sandwich, right? Yeah, just a sandwich. Just a sandwich. No chips, no nothing. sides, no dessert. Literally nothing. And all my water, all my so, delicious water that's that right. I have to drink so every your, day. <laughs> your designated snack time mid-afternoon. Yeah. You chose what? Apples and cheese fruit and nuts what did you eat for your designated snack time i i had a had a few dill pickle chips <laughs> <laughs> they have no added sugar oh, though. <laughs> <laughs> i checked okay Jillian, this girl is going to skirt the rules as much as she can she's like listen i'm walking the line but i'm not crossing the line i had a designated snack time I ate my dill pickle chips at my designated <laughs> snack time, and I checked the nutritional facts, and there are no added sugars in dill pickle chips. Yep. So I'm following the rules. That's what. That's exactly. What, that's what Caitlin told me. Kinsley, similar story for you, I think. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much the same. You also had designated snack time mid afternoon. Yep. And hammering some chips. Yep. Yeah. Maybe let's work on better choices for designated snack time tomorrow so yeah. uh, the purpose of a snack is to kind of like satiate you just enough to where you are ready for dinner but yeah. not where it totally ruins your dinner you know so like dad said nuts or fruit you know things like cheese, that cheese whatever are, cottage cheese yogurt i, I feel bullied berries. right now i'm being bullied you're not being parents. bullied you're not <laughs> being bullied that's her favorite so, term right now yeah, we're right. in that uh, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes for sure <laughs> so one thing i'm noticing about the challenges that i think that's really smart that julian did is when she laid it out like there are going to be days for everybody that are easy that are just kind of part of the thing that you already do or it's not too much of a deviation of what you already do then there are going to be the really hard ones and so I think for the girls, no mindless snacking is going to be one of the toughest things for them to overcome. For you, actually, I think the Agreed. sugar one is the bigger one. Exactly what I was going to say. You're not I a, think I'm going to struggle snacker, the most. With... But you love dessert. Oh, I love dessert. You love dessert. <laughs> um, and mine is coming up, I think, on day five, which is no more alcohol for, I don't know how long it's been. Well, I'm, we'll talk about it when we get there, I'm sure. But 
So I've got to go six days with no alcohol, uh-huh. which uh, mm, I don't drink a lot fun. of alcohol, but I drink alcohol every day. So, <laughs> uh, so that's it. So we had a pretty successful day today with the no mindless snacking. I literally just had breakfast, lunch, and dinner today. Today also happened to be our off day from training. So we've trained for the last couple days, have a day off. We'll train again tomorrow, which made it easier to just eat at breakfast, lunch, and dinner today. So I think it was funny when Jillian was like, is that really all? That's what you had? I'm like, yep, that's what I had. So I concur. So there we go. That is day three, no mindless snacking. And we'll see you tomorrow for day four. Captain's log, day four of the 10 day nutrition challenge. This is the day where we're supposed to start keeping a food journal of everything that goes in our mouth. And at Barbell Logic, we tend to use what we call a VFD a lot, which is a visual food diary. Works pretty well, everyone has a phone. If you remember to take a picture of everything you eat, it works perfectly, right? The hard part with that is sometimes you forget and you start eating and then you're like, crap, I didn't take a picture. And so I think that was what Kaylin did. Kaylin, you you intended, I think, to take pictures of everything you ate. What did you end up doing? So today specifically, I ate and then I thought about it and I was like, oh, I didn't take a photo. And so I just wrote about it in a journal. <laughs> okay. And that works fine. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty much what I did. So you journaled dinner. all of them yes. and took pictures of some. Yes. Got it. Is the goal tomorrow to start to try to remember to take pictures of all? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Kinsley, you decided to journal all of yours in your phone, everything you ate. Yep, I forgot to take pictures of everything. How did you guys do to my girls on the other stuff? Because obviously this is just, it's sort of like math where we add, so we still are supposed to drink all of our water, right? So half of our body weight in ounces. Yeah. We're still supposed to keep our sugar under 50 grams. We're still supposed to stop mindless snacking. And then today we actually track everything. How'd that, how's that going? Yeah. So t- since Saturdays are mostly my lazy day, I was playing Minecraft. But today is think- Saturday. So I don't think you guys knew about this, but I got some Andes mints from my birthday party. And I wasn't thinking at all. And I opened up an Andes mint and I started and I bit into it. And I was like, oh, shoot. And I immediately wrapped it up and put it in my trash can. There you go. So that, that's <laughs> literally like, oh, the no. definition of mindless snacking. I think actually this is what's hard. <laughs> so there are times I think when we snack or we have something we're like conscious about it. We're like, I yeah. really want this. Yeah. I'll talk about what I what I did today. <laughs> and looking back, there's a, one thing that I had that I'm sort of like upset that I ate it. And there's other times when I've done the same thing where you just mindless. And that's frustrating because afterwards you go, crap, I wasn't yeah. supposed to have anything to eat. Yeah. And so... Kinsley, how did you do? How are you doing on your water, on your snacking, on sugar, stuff like that? I haven't had a snack today, and I've had three hydro flasks of water today. Okay. Full. Awesome. You're crushing it. And yeah, I don't think I've had any sugar today either. Awesome. All is good. Mama Bear, how you doing? I'm doing really good. Um, I think so far getting enough water tends to be what I struggle with because, as we said before, I'm not a big drinker, so I'm having to force myself. And I like to drink cold brew in the morning. I like to have unsweetened iced tea. But if I drink either one of those things, then I'm not thirsty to drink water. To get your water. So yeah. I'm having to cut out those two things that I really like. So I kind of struggle because those are some of the things that I can actually drink that um, are sweetened. Right. And don't have sugar, but they're not. What if you water. cut the volume <laughs> of your cold brew in half so you still had some cold brew? Right. And sometimes you mix it with, you kind of turn it into a latte. Like you'll make it with like some Fair Life milk or you'll put a, like a vanilla Fair Life protein shake in it. What if you went half volume, but stayed away from the tea just for now, just for the 10 day challenge? Right. And, and it might still give you a, a little bit of the best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah. I could do that for sure. The drinking stuff's easy for me. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, the, so you had like a whole gallon before, like I, <laughs> breakfast this morning. I have I had two liters before <laughs> breakfast this morning, and there's and oh. it wasn't like I, I wasn't actually wasn't even trying. It was just I'm just thirsty enough that I just I you know I I like I'm making this bubbly lime water. You know, bubbly water. I put a little squeeze of lime in it. And I have it. It goes so well with a. I make espresso, you know, or a little small americano with my espresso machine, and it works great. So that's going well. 
interesting today when adding the food journal. So I've done the visual food diary several times for Jillian over the last several years. She's been my personal nutrition coach for several years. And so I, I've done that where I take pictures of everything on my phone. And I felt like because I had done that so much, then I needed to step it up to the next level for this 10 day nutrition challenge. And I went back to my fitness pal, which I haven't used not really consistently for a year or so. Use the premium version of that, went ahead and repaid for the year for that. And it's interesting because it actually supports all of the other things that had come before this, right? So when it came time to start to input, what am I going to eat? You're kind of looking through and you're trying to sort of plan your day and plan, here's what I'm going to have for breakfast. I'm going to start to kind of lay this out, make sure the macros look right, make sure the calories look right. It helps you stay away from the sugar. It helps you stay away from the mindless snacking. Again, the water is pretty easy for me. And so tracked everything on my fitness pal, planned to do that again for the rest of this 10 day challenge and went pretty well. I like it. I think it's kind of fun, actually. Yeah. Well, you think it's fun because you make me do all the work and then you go into my diary and then you <laughs> copy what I had and then you put it on your diary True and then story. you, adju you uh -oh. adjust the servings down. But you, nice one, you are better. So one of the things that I struggle with is portion size. Right. And so... That's where I really like the things that have the scan bars. Right. So I can scan it. Right. And it's a lot easier. But if I look at a potato, I'm like, I have no idea. Sure. Sure. How many now, grams or anything <laughs> that that would be. I don't know that anybody is perfect at that or really great at that. I've got a pretty good handle. I've done this before when we're cooking, just even when we're baking or something. I'm, I can put a tablespoon or a teaspoon or a quarter cup. I can eyeball all those sort of things. And, if somebody calls me on it, I'll go watch and I can take it and put it in the actual thing and it's pretty much done on. That said, today, I actually measured everything. Like I literally weighed and measured everything we ate because I wanted to get it done on as much as I could. And so, and the other thing I think that's going to be tough for us as we start to literally measure what we're eating on my fitness pal is that your calories are about two thirds mine. And so we're eating the same thing. And so it just really becomes about portion control. It's for both, but you know, you can't just eat the same thing that I'm eating every day because, you know, I'd weigh a lot more than you do, right? I, you know, more than a third, more than what you weigh. And so, yeah, it's been good though so far. It's been a good strategy for us. I've had no snacks today. The only thing, I was really hungry. So we trained really hard today. We had good hard training. And then we went out and played tennis for 25 minutes right after training. So we had training and then you and I went out and, and had a kind of a cardio hit workout, mostly because you were knocking the tennis balls all over the place and I was running all over the place to get your wow. oh my errant gosh. tennis balls. Oh my it was gosh. an intense Throw hit me workout for bus, me. Huh? <laughs> uh, I was pretty good at getting the tennis ball in your general mm -hmm. direction. You were wearing some shorty yeah, shorts. Yeah, Dad. So I wanted <laughs> to see you sure. run around. It was the shorty shorts. shorts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was shorty shorts. <laughs> so, I love uh, hearing this from my parents. And then I get so ravenous. Fun. So we had our typical very healthy, very good breakfast, kind of our egg. So, scrambled. Yeah, scrambled egg kind of bowl. And then you had, did you have oatmeal as your carbs? What were your I carbs? I had my malt meal. Malt meal for carbs. Mm -hmm. And I, I usually have Greek yogurt and berries. For lunch, we made kind of a monster mash combo. So rice and sweet potatoes and peppers, red bell pepper onions. and onions and then 90% lean ground beef. And yeah. everybody ate that for lunch. It was really good. Yeah. So I had that for lunch. No snacks. I was so hungry. I, and I know people do this. This is another time that I struggle. One of the times I struggle with mindless, I don't know that it's even mindless snacking. It's probably conscious snacking. Is while I'm cooking dinner and I'm handling food and I'm and starving. So hungry. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, I'm so hungry. So I was like, hey, let's do this. It's the no alcohol rule tomorrow. Again, should be an easy one for our girls tomorrow to cut out the alcohol. <laughs> Better be. Uh, as long as they, you know, don't need cough syrup or something. And, uh, <laughs> and so uh, as long as nobody gets a cold, it's going to yeah, be definitely sorry, tougher for, toughest for me. So I was like, hey, let's split a beer while we're making dinner tonight. So we split a beer and then I got a small portion of Spanish peanuts and a small portion of cashews. And it didn't matter in the grand scheme of things for my calories, but it threw me over on the fat once I had eaten my dinner. So my fat is over. And so now I'm kind of in this situation where like I've got another hundred calories that I can play with before I go to bed tonight. I'm going to have to have one of those really small Fairlife protein shakes to bump my protein up, but I'm not going to quite hit my protein goals today because I went over on my fat and that's not exactly. So my macro, again, it's one of the reasons we keep the diary on this and is so I can get the handle again of, you know, my calories were about right, but my protein was a little low. My fat was a little high. Carbs were about right as well. So that's where we're at for the visual food diary. So Kinsley keeping the notepad, the journal, Caitlin's going to do the best she can to actually keep the visual food diary and take pictures. 
and journal it as a backup. And then you and I are doing the My Fitness Pal to actually track exactly what we're eating. And so we will keep you all updated for the rest of the episode as we walk through the uh, rest of the 10 days. Tomorrow is no alcohol. So everything's the Woo. same except for no alcohol. And here's the thing. I actually just finished a glass. I had a glass of Weller 12. I've had no whiskey today. I've had a beer and a half and now a glass of whiskey. I didn't even really want the whiskey tonight which is fairly rare, you know, I mean, I'd say four or five nights out of seven, I'm going to have a glass of whiskey in the evening. I didn't even really want it tonight. And I thought I'm not going to even be able to get it the next six days. So it's another interesting thing about this 10 day challenge is, so two items is that when you know what is coming tomorrow, you tend to go overboard a little bit the day before. I think yeah, it's human nature. I, did right? that. I certainly didn't go overboard on alcohol today. I mean, I had a beer and a half and like right. literally one small glass but of whiskey. I thought if I don't get that but tomorrow, I wouldn't have, that's right. I, wouldn't have, have, I would not have tomorrow. had the whiskey today. Yeah. And, you know, it's just because I knew that I can't have it tomorrow. And then for the next six days, it's going to be this. And I'm going to crave it like crazy because I know I can't have it. Right. And so that's, that's going to really be tough. funny that you think that way because before we did the mindless snacking, like the day that we started it, I stopped snacking. Right. Because I was like, you snack like it's going to be the day before. <laughs> no, I didn't snack at all. Like oh. I just, I just completely like, Nothing. Just shut it down. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I need to get used to not snacking. So I just I get stopped. It. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I went the opposite way. I was like, let's have some <laughs> extra nice. whiskey tonight because <laughs> we don't get any for the next oh, six yeah. days. So, all right. So we'll update you tomorrow night on how it goes. I was going to make some terrible joke. I don't drink very much alcohol. I just have a little bit every day. It's going to be interesting to see. I'm certainly going to get creative with the bubbly water. I'm going to make it even look like cocktails. That's my plan is to take a put my uh, my carbonated water in rocks glasses and put fun ice cubes in and probably some herbs and berries <laughs> try to make it feel like it's a cocktail so I can feel like that's what I'm drinking and uh, we'll see how it goes the next six days so thanks for hanging in there with us and we'll uh, talk to you tomorrow